Did yeah. you did you ever uh, connect with your dad later in life? So the crazy part about that is, <clears throat> just within this year, wow. I, I I made contact with my dad. No way. So, bro. Uh, yeah, you're getting exclusive. <laughs> bro, what was that like? What what happened? How's it going, guys? Welcome back to the Dad Tired Podcast. I'm your host, Jared Lopes. Join me every Monday as we dive into what it looks like to be men who fall in love with Jesus and help our families do the same. You can learn more about our books, resources, conferences, and even online community by going to dadtired.com. Let's dive into today's episode. All right, guys. Well, welcome back to the Dad Tired Show. Uh, you guys, this is a this is a crazy. I know I've been doing a lot of interviews, uh, and uh, I know some of you, half of you, are like, "Jared, do more interviews with great people. These are so awesome." And half of you are like, "Please stop with all the interviews. Uh, just share from your heart or whatever." So just know I'm I'm aware of that. I know that half of you guys really love the interviews, and half of you guys uh, would love for me just to share more from personal stuff. But anyway. Part of the reason I've had so many interviews lately, if I'm totally honest, which I always want to be with you guys, uh, is just because I've been traveling a lot, doing a lot of these dad tired conferences, and it's hard to like record uh, my own stuff in the middle of uh, all the traveling. So please bear with me. Uh, next week, I'll have an episode for you where I'm just going to share some real personal stuff. Um, I'm not even going to give you a hint of what it's about uh, yet. I promise you I know what it is. <laughs> Uh, but, but I'm not going to give you a hint on anything yet, but just know I'm aware of it and, uh, we'll, we'll try to balance out all the interviews. That being said, today's interview, uh, is so good. Uh, it's with Grammy award winning, uh, artist Lecrae. Um, I just, I can't even believe like, dude, if you knew the story of dad tired and how this whole thing started that I was like plugging headphones into my ears, um, a few years ago and, uh, recording in my bedroom, although I'm still doing that. Um, but I was recording in my bedroom with just headphones into my phone and I knew nothing about podcasting and nobody knew about dad tired anything. And the fact that I'm now having conversations with, uh, amazing guests and guys like Lecrae still just blows my mind. I'm just like, it, it's crazy to me. Um, but anyway, I'm, I'm, so thankful to be able to do it and the way that God has just continued to show his favor on this podcast has been super cool. That being said, this interview with Lecrae is it's it's nuts, man. It's cray cray. I probably that's terrible. I that I'll probably cut that. That's not <laughs> Uh, it's so good. Uh, and he actually ends up sharing some stuff in this interview that he said he's never shared with anyone before. In particular, um, him reconnecting with his dad, um, who he hadn't seen or talked to since he was like, well, less than a year old is when his dad left. So some really intense stuff that we talk about in this podcast. And I think it's just going to help you on your dad journey of figuring out like how important your role is as a dad and continuing to show up and be faithful to your family. Um, but anyway, it's really cool to hear like this side of Lecrae that I think most of us probably would never um, get to hear. And he really shares really vulnerably and honestly with us. Um, before we dive into this interview, which is really good uh, and I'm excited for you to listen to, I just want to remind you guys, if you want to have a conference in your city. Um, we are trying to find more churches who will host these conferences. And listen, even if you're not on staff at a church, I'm about to go to Iowa, or by the time you listen to this podcast, I will have just gotten back from Iowa. Um, but the, the guy who put that together is just like a dad. He's a police officer who's working a bunch of jobs and trying to support his family. He's just a normal dude who loves Jesus and really wanted one of these um, conferences at his church. So uh, you can do it, man. Like you, if you're willing to like kind of talk to your pastors or talk to who, the leadership at your church, we can make these things happen. But uh, you can email me at hello at dadtire.com. Or if you go on our website, you'll see the conferences tab and you'll see a tab there, a link there that says host a conference and you can get some more information there. But we'd love to do one. Also, if your church or, or event or organization is just looking for a speaker, maybe your workplace is looking for a speaker. I, I sometimes will talk to organizations about what it looks like for family balance. Like how does a man at work balance uh, trying to work really hard and also be fully present with his family? So if your workplace wants to have some discussions around that, I'd love to come in and talk to your organization about that as well. So if you're looking for a speaker or a Dad Tired conference, please email me, hello at dadtired.com, and we can get that conversation going. But without further ado, I'm stoked for you to listen to this con conversation with Lecrae. Uh, let's dive in. The 
McCray, so excited that you're here, man. Uh, grateful that you took the time out of your busy schedule to hang out with us. For maybe like the one dude who may have <laughs> never heard of you before, uh, give us an update on who you are and what you're up to these days. Yeah, um, that's funny. I Well, if you don't know, um, Lecrae is my real name. I'm a, a music artist. Um, I am a... Uh, you know, a hip hop artist who loves Jesus. And so you can hear the authenticity of my faith and my music quite often. Um, been able to travel the world, win some awards, you know, Grammys and stuff like that uh, for making music. But um, yeah, I mean, that's a, you know, a musician more than anything. And then I guess I run a couple little businesses on the side. So I am also um, an undrafted free agent for every major sport there is. So <laughs> when the time comes, I'm I'm here. <laughs> if you could pick one, if you could pick one sport, what would it be? I was definitely gonna be basketball. Yeah, you know, it would be basketball. Yeah. And if yeah. you got drafted, what team would you want to play on? Um, I'm going to just go to the Lakers because I can coast and uh, let LeBron and Anthony Davis do everything just and ride just take it a out. ring home. Yeah, That's just ride it out and take a ring home. That's yeah. funny, bro. Uh, did you play sports growing up, like in high school and stuff? Yeah, I played, um, I played, you know, baseball, basketball, football, um, and even wrestling. So I really? loved sports as a kid and, and uh, just, you know, never pursued it on a, a higher level just because I got into it late. Did you know, I didn't have a dad around and kind of encouraged me and teach me how to do a lot of these things. So I just uh, kind of figured it out on my own and yeah. also figured out I was a little late. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, man. Well, that's funny. Um, yeah. On the way to, I took my kids to school this morning and, uh, my son was kind of giving me a little bit of an attitude. He's he had that like morning grumpiness and, uh, I just started playing your music in the car. Like I just put it on in the car. I'm like, hey, bro, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to be talking to this dude later today. And then all of a sudden, I was just like the best dad. Like, all of a sudden, he's like obedient. He's like, thought I was so cool, oh, wanted wow. to talk. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, he's a big fan of your music. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, he loves you. Uh, I live to make dads cooler. Yeah, dude. I live for that. You did it, man. <laughs> you did it today. You accomplished it. Uh, right on. Well, bro, I want to I want to get into your story, man. Uh, you you've uh, obviously you're just crushing it. That was a really nonchalant nonchalant introduction that you gave, like just winning awards and traveling the world and stuff. But uh, you're crushing it, man. You're just you're doing a lot of amazing things and putting out some amazing music. Um, but in the midst of that, you have like a heart for fatherhood, which I'm, I want to talk a lot about today. But uh, first, I just want to like back up and hear your story, man. Like, what what was it like growing up for you? Like, uh, tell me about your journey as a kid. Mm. Yeah. Um, you know, as a kid, I, um, my mom and my dad, they, um, were young, you know, early twenties. Um, my mom got pregnant and just kind of didn't want to follow down the same path that she's seen so often in her family of, uh, women, you know, um, just not, you know, being in a, a family, but she didn't quite know what that looked like because she didn't grow up in, in a kind of a nuclear healthy family. So she got married on a whim to my dad. It, it lasted all of a year. Mm. Um, and and then um, so uh, they just went their separate ways. And it was just a lot of trauma and a lot of pain. And um, and I didn't know their stories, you know, so I didn't quite understand. But um my dad was out of the picture and he never returned. You know, he just never became, was present in my life again. Um, and so um, I lived kind of hoping that maybe he'd come back one day and just kind of kind of like the kid waiting for Superman to come back. Mm. Um, and uh, that was, you know, it was, it was really traumatizing. I didn't realize it as a kid. You don't realize it. You know, your kid brain doesn't know what's happening. Right. Um, so it was a lat latchkey kid because my mom had to work a lot. Um, and so I was home a lot by myself, just using my imagination. It's probably why I love music so much. Cause I listen to music all the time to, uh, keep myself company as a kid. And, um, you know, the unfortunate part about it was, you know, she didn't have a lot of money. Um, I was, I had to stay with family members and whoever could take care of me. And so she had to make a lot of choices that she probably wouldn't have loved to make. And that sometimes put me in environments that weren't the best. And, uh, 
influences in my life that were not healthy for me as a kid. And so, um, you know, outside of my own negative kind of trajectory and wanting to get caught up with the wrong crowd and, and do a lot of uh, terrible things, I was also just taken advantage of. And so, you know, physically abused and molested and, you know, a lot of things like that. So it left a lot of scars uh, for me just as a kid growing up. But, um, but, but even outside of that, man, I just, I enjoyed, um, you know, just being outside and playing sports and, and having friends and, and mischief and video games. And so a lot of my childhood was normal from that capacity. Yeah. At what point did yeah. you, what, at what point did you realize that your, your dad's absence actually was affecting you? Oh, uh, it was, it's, it's always been a pain point, you know, it's, it's, it's just always been a pain point. I, I definitely remember, um, a couple of, of occasions, I, I think I remember once um, as a kid of a bunch of kids talking about their dad and what their dad did. And um, I think I was in kindergarten. And um, and I remember coming home and just saying, Mom, where, where's my dad? Mm. When is my dad going to come? Mm. And, um, and, you know, she didn't have any clear answers for me, you know. And so um, I, I, I remember that moment specifically. And then I also remember, um, you know, in high school playing basketball and seeing a lot of my friends' dads show up. And I remember one specific occasion, my friend's dad surprised him before the game and bought him a new pair of shoes to play in. And, uh, and I just thought, wow, you know, I wish I wish I could experience that. I don't know what that feels like. I was happy for him. I wasn't jealous or mad. I was like, wow, I'm so happy for him because he gets to experience that. And I just wished I could experience that. So it was always a pain point, you know, it was a, what, 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 I, what, you know, you would call a father wound where, you know, you just, you, you, you grow up and you realize no one has taught me how to do certain things. No one has taught me, you know, about this hair growing under my arms and yeah. what does this mean? And, uh, you know, just, just little things, um, that you, you, you grow up missing out on. Yeah, dude, bro. Just like hearing that story, like makes me tear up, like, <laughs> especially as a dad now, you know, like it, it, it hits oh, you yeah. different as a dad now. Like, and you think back to that, that there's kids right now in schools who are experiencing the same thing and just like wishing their dad was around, bro. Like that kind of stuff like chokes me up, man. I'm just like, man, it's, I was that kid too. I I remember in the, in the, I was playing basketball in my driveway and I would actually picture my dad sitting there like coaching me. And, uh, and, Mm. and I remember like now, as I think back on that, it's just like crushing. Like if that were my son's thoughts, like I can't even imagine how sad that is right but that was my my story man and that sounds like that was your story too you said once in an article i'm quoting you you said if you could trace my life's biggest struggles back to their origin most of them would lead to a childhood version of me wrestling with my father's absence uh what do you mean by that yeah just that man it's just you know you begin to wrestle with your identity you know and obviously as a christian i believe that a father's job is to point them to the ultimate father yeah. um and and it and to to give them the proverbial tools the you know the proverbs and and how to walk this life out and i was just never given that you know and um and so you you don't know that that's what your dad's supposed to do but you do know that even though this man has done nothing um to earn your respect or, or love, you just think in your mind as a kid that he's Superman. And yeah. so you can't figure out why Superman doesn't want to come live with you or, right. or be in your life. And so you start to um, personalize it and say, maybe it's me. And, you know, mm. and, and it becomes a part of your own identity that, that there's, there's something flawed or wrong with you um, as a human being that your dad doesn't want to be involved in your life. And mm. you, you unbeknowingly own, uh, but knowingly, but know, but know to myself, I owned it. And so, uh, so that was, that was tough, man. That's been, been a pain point for me, um, for, for the better part of my life. Yeah. And, and I mean, I, I can relate to that, bro. Like just the identity struggle. I remember thinking because I didn't like as an adult realizing because I didn't have a dad constantly pointing back, like telling me, Hey, this is who you are. This is your identity. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've just, mm-hmm. I've spent my whole life searching for it, you know, just like trying yeah. to just everywhere I can find, uh, somebody to like tell me who I am and I'm good enough. I'm worth it. Like, do you, mm. do you resonate with that? Like, do you, do you still, hundred percent. yeah. Like what's that like? Like, what is that 100%. processing been like for you? Just figuring out, like you're trying to find your own identity now as a man. Well, yeah, you know, as, 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 you know, a, a teenager, a lot of my major influences were kind of my uncles and some of the guys in the neighborhood who were, you know, um, they were tough guys and they were 
that were that were you know gang members or drug dealers or you know their whole idea of what manhood was or how many women they could sleep with and how tough they were yeah and um and so you know i began to adopt that mentality and embrace that mentality which was very you know unfortunate for me uh because i wasn't as tough as they were you know and so i'd always wrestle with the, the thought that man i ran from a fight am i less a man i don't know you know i don't i don't I've never been to jail, which is ridiculous because it's a great thing. But, right. but you know, because I, my view of manhood was so warped, um, I thought that 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 somehow made me less a man. And then as I got older, um, and even as I be you know became a Christian and just found, you know, even godly men um, to be around, I still wanted their affirmation so bad. Yeah. You know, I wanted them to say, "You got it," or "You're good at," or "You've done it," and um, just just clink, just wanting their affirmation. And finding my identity and my worth in their affirmation and not in who God said that I was. And so that was that's that's still a pain issue, you know, that I've had to wrestle through. And then I think now uh, the, the biggest struggle is to remind myself that any achievement that I have or, you know, anything that I've done is is really it does not uh, contribute to my worth and my value, and my identity um, as a man and as a father. Um, and, and just reminding myself of that, that I, my worth and my value are intrinsic and they, they came with me when I came out the womb. I didn't have to go out there in the world and go, you know, wield them on to myself. So so that's tough, man. And um, and then as you're, you know, you're raising kids, you're, you're thinking through all this stuff and trying to be honest and say, man, I'm insecure, even as a dad, as a father, I'm yeah. insecure, I'm insecure and, um, and I'm, I wrestle with it every day. Yeah, dude. Like, I, I think that's hard for everyone. Like, uh, I think a lot of dudes struggle with that, um, trying to find identity, not in their business card title or what they've accomplished. Um, uh, but I imagine that's like, you, you're kind of, a, you're experiencing that on a different scale. Like even for me, uh, I, I've like written a book and I've, you know, have a podcast or whatever. And I tell my wife, like, man, there are times where I'm fearful that if all this went away, like my, I'd have an identity crisis and I'd be like, Mm. And who am I? Like, if nobody was patting me on the back or saying, hey, great message or great whatever, like, who am, would I handle that? All right. Like, have you thought of that? Because you, you're on a much bigger <laughs> mountain than I am uh, as far as what you've accomplished. And I'm, I imagine you got a lot of people around you cheering you on. Um, but in the mm. quiet, like if all that went away, um, do you feel mm. still feel like there'd be like that little boy that's like, oh, man, like, am I good enough? Like, am I OK without any of these accolades? It's so funny you say that. Um, <clears throat> I never forget I was watching a, an ESPN episode on, um, I, I forgot the, the player, it might have been Tiki Williams, but yeah. um, but they just, you know, they, they were all being candid and honest about the fact that when their career is over, they don't know who they are and mm. they don't know what they're supposed to do, you know, and the, the, the helmet is off and they wake up and they're, they feel worthless. And there's just like this depression. And I remember telling myself, I was on tour and I said, that will not be me. Mm. I will not be the person who will not have any worth or identity. If, if I no longer get to do the things that have, you know, brought me accolades or right. that I've enjoyed. And, um, and, and then, you know, over the last few years, you know, God kind of just sat me down and I had to back away from music for a while and, you know, just spend some time with my family and get my own mental and emotional health right. Yeah. And, um, and, and, you know, the applause stopped and the shows weren't there. And, you know, and it was kind of like, oh, my goodness, like, who am I? Mm. Oh, no, the thing that's happening to the football players is <laughs> happening to me. Right. Right. <laughs> and, and so, you know, you can just come to this place where you're like, um, I've got to, to, to know that my value is not in what I do. You know, I'm not what I do. And, uh, and so, you know, it's, it's, but here's the, here's the thing that I've learned in, in life. And this is in all things, you know, is that it's a, it's a journey. It's not a destination, yep. you know, and I think people always want to like, so what's the answer? What's the solution? The solution is to keep wrestling every day. The solution is to keep fighting every day. Like I'll never be humble. I'll always be in pursuit of humility, right? Mm -hmm. I'll never, I'll never be great. I'll always be in pursuit of greatness. You know, it's just always recognizing it's the journey. It's the journey. Mm -hmm. So, did yeah. you did you ever uh, connect with your dad later in life? So the crazy part about that is, 
just within this year wow. I, I i made contact with my dad no way so uh, yeah you're getting exclusive <laughs> oh, what was that like what, what happened Hey guys, I want to take a minute to thank our friends over at Abide for sponsoring this episode. If the first thing you do when you wake up is look at your phone, then try this instead. Instead of checking social media, open the Abide app and start your day in the spirit and peace of Christ. Abide is the number one Christian meditation app and Abide users report less stress, lower levels of anxiety and depression, and better sleep. You can start your day with Abide's daily meditation and based on biblical scriptures, these audio meditations will center you and draw you closer to Christ. For a limited time, our listeners get 25% off a premium subscription when you visit abide.co, that's C-O, forward slash dad. Again, that's abide.co forward slash dad. Get started now with 25% off a premium subscription by downloading the Abide app at abide.co forward slash dad. You'll get additional stories and meditations, premium music, soothing sounds, and more. Support this show and get 25% off by going to abide.com forward slash dad. That's A-B-I-D-E dot C-O slash dad to download the Abide app and get 25% off your premium subscription. You know, uh, my dad has three kids. I have a brother and a sister, mm. and um, and we got together and we just said, um, um, you know, my sister said I found his address. You know, he's in California, and you know, I want to go see him, but there's no way I can go alone. Mm. My brother is like, I want nothing to do with this man. Yeah, I'm I'm over it. And so my sister and I said, well, let's embark on his journey. And um, we just showed up at his at his apartment, no way. you know, and um, and and it was really surreal. It took a lot, you know, on my end. It took me having to um, so many emotions. You know, there's the emotion of like I got to guard my heart because I have this 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 desire for this daddy to come into my life and right. love me and be my dad that I always missed. But that's that's not a reality. You know, I'm a daddy now, so I can't, you know, right. that there's too much time gone. You know what I mean? Um, and then there's another side of, of, um, you owe me, man, yeah. you owe me, you yeah. ran out and you owe me and I'm upset at you. And I, and I, and I'm mad. And I had to, you know, just process all that internal stuff and, and just say, man, let me just be at step one and say, who are you? You know, what, what's your story? I don't mm -hmm. even know anything about you. And just, and it was just sitting there and listening to him and listening to some stuff, you know, and again, he's older, he's an old school guy. So for him being in tune and in touch with emotions and transparent about this is like, no way I don't right. do this type of stuff, right. you know? So, so getting to the heart of his issues, it was kind of like knocking that on a brick wall. It was like, ah, like what, what, what happened? What happened? I wasn't there. You know, right, it's like, right. okay, but I mean, you know, <laughs> <what I> mean. <laughs> yeah. um, but it was actually healing for me. It was very healing because though I didn't get what I thought I was going to get, um, I got to see my mannerisms that mm. I had, that he had, I got to see some of his reasonings and, and I got to see some of the, the detriments that I could, land in if mm. i wasn't careful mm. you know and so uh so all that stuff was very helpful and healing for me um and i was able to walk away and say you know what i get to be what i didn't have and that's 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 enough you know I, i'm not gonna get what i didn't get but i get to give what i didn't get to my own kids bro so. dude that's huge man yeah. holy cow oh, it was intense like you just knocked yeah. on the door like he didn't he was home like how did that play it sorry i'm going to like the details here but that's so intense man like showing up was he caught off yeah. guard was he like come on in uh he was definitely caught off guard you know he was caught off guard he kind of freaked out and was like what in the world and you know it was kind of like he was just in total shock yeah you know just complete and utter shock and so um you know what there was you know but he he we're really similar in that um 
all right, I'm in shock, but you know, this is where we are. Let's jump in. I, mm. he, he jumped in the deep end. Mm. And, um, you know, and it's unfortunate. I think for him, he saw himself as the victim in, yeah. instead of um, the person who created a lot of pain. And so mm. that was, it was all good for me to see, you yeah. know, because I was like, I don't want to be that naive that I don't realize my decisions and my actions affect my kids yeah. so detrimentally. And so it was good to see. Bro, that's huge. And dude, just hearing that, man, like I'm, I'm just going to pray that that's not the end of the story, you know, that God continues to soften his heart. And, uh, I don't know, man, even though it sounds like God yeah. really used it for like healing for you. Um, uh, but that there, yeah, there yeah, would just yeah. continue to be healing on both ends, man. That's huge, bro. I, I, appreciate, I appreciate you sharing that. that. Yeah. 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 It was good. I, I mean, one, another thing that I did learn is that he's a, he is a believer and so mm. he's got some unique perspectives but um you know he's very adamant about his relationship with jesus and so i was uh i was encouraging it's like well if we don't get it right on this side of heaven maybe we'll we'll we'll, we'll, we'll get it right on the other side that's right man <laughs> yeah that's right <laughs> yeah yeah Do, i mean did he follow it like was he f following everything that you had going on was he familiar with everything he was yeah. he actually was pretty pretty familiar um and and it was probably it was a point of pride and shame for him at mm. the same time. Mm. So, uh, so you know, you have nothing to do with the the progress or the success of your child, um, but at the same time, you're like, that's my child. So yeah. it's a mixture of like, man, I wasn't involved in any of this, but at the same time, it's still my kid. So it's a lot, you know. Bro, that's I, so I, complex. And, so it is, and you know what's funny? I'm not even as upset probably because I am a dad, you yep. know what I mean? Yep. And you just know the perils and the struggles of being a dad yep. and being a husband. And it like, Oh, this is really hard, yep. you know? And so I, I get it, bro. I get it. You know what I mean? Um, and I, the days when I'm like, I want to toss it all to the wind. I remember what it was like for me as a kid. Yep. And, uh, and it makes it a lot easier to keep pressing. I remember when my son was three, which was when my dad bailed and my wife and I were going through a really crappy season. And I'm like, mm. you know, all those thoughts start playing in my head. And I'm like, I can't do it, man. I can't do to my son what yeah. happened to me. Like, it's just such motivation, yeah. you know, like I, yeah. God's going to redeem this stuff, man. Big time. Yeah, bro. Big I I, I really yeah. appreciate you sharing that story. That's that's intense stuff, man. I'll keep praying for that. Yeah, that, that's a lot there. Yeah. And I'm sure there's yeah. going to be still like emotions come up even like it, it sounds like it's recent. I'm sure there's going to be like, like the grieving process, you know, like every day is going to be different in that. So, mm. yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it, to me, it's all a part of a bigger thing that I think God is doing in my life um, of, of just doing a lot of restoring, you know, yeah. my whole next album is called restoration because I literally am walking through i've seen a restored marriage over the last year i've got restored relationships with family members um restored faith restored just perspective and so i'm i'm just that's the season i'm in and i i didn't i didn't take it lightly that god opened up the door to to meet my father and there's some just some things being restored there as well so. yeah you said uh, yeah. you've seen a restored marriage is that you and your wife yeah absolutely yeah how long yeah. have you been married we have oh my gosh 13 years oh wow so yeah we we met um i've known her m over half my life you Dang. know um yeah we met at 18 years old and so uh and we've been together you know since we were kids and you know now we're raising kids yep <laughs> I always tell people, man, like mar marriage is just practice. It's like you never get there. Like as you never like get to a spot. It's like, oh, this. I mean, I don't think you do. I've only been married 10 years. So I'm, I'm speaking maybe too early. Maybe there's like people who've been married 50 years and they do get there. But I just it feels like it's just always yeah. practice. You know, like uh, yeah. you just keep practicing. You keep trying to figure it out and learn. But uh, yeah. yeah, what I mean, what do you mind like sharing what when you talk about restored marriage and stuff like where are you guys at? Yeah. Yeah, you know, I think we were in a season, so a lot of people will say, you know, if you think about it, like your hands, sometimes your palms are facing together and that's like ideal when you guys are just looking at each other and you guys see each other for who you are. And then sometimes your palms are opposite 
you know, in the back of your hands together. That's when you're back to back against the world and she's fighting all the things that she's got to take care of and you're fighting all the things that you got to take care of. And then sometimes you guys are side by side and your palms are just facing the outside world. And it's kind of like you guys are side by side, but you guys are weathering a lot of storms. Mm. And I think we've just, we, you know, we had kids really young. We haven't really had a lot of face to face. We've mm. been back to back weathering our individual storms or side by side, weathering parenting mm. or moving or something. And so we just really didn't get a chance to develop that friendship that like you know rhythm of like i see you i hear you i appreciate you um it was just kind of taken for granted mm -hmm. and um and what in, ended up happening is is over time you become roommates whereas somebody you know it's like you're doing this and i'm off on my mission and i'm saving the world and i'm traveling and making albums and you know she's uh volunteering and and dealing with stuff with school and um and then we come together and we deal with kids and we go to games and you know and and not making you know you hear about date nights but then date nights end up being times where you're just talking about kids and right. talking about problems yep. and, and you're you're not saying talking about hey when was your first you know tell me about prom <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. like what was you, you know what you know what what movies do you love and why do you love them like just getting to to know each other again and, yeah. and uh so we we totally lost that um mm. it was just gone for mm. a good two years it wow. was just gone and we'd already had a rough ride you know just raising kids from the first year we got married and so uh it was it was just rough man and to where we were both just content um in that rhythm of like not being connected mm. and um and when you're there i think it just that's where you know satan has a field day yep. and just reminding you know plan you know showing you you can be appreciated somewhere else or convincing you that maybe this isn't the right place for you yep. or you know you plot and plan about how the, the kids would be if you left and you guys could live here and you just you're you know you start processing so much stuff instead of working on the relationship yep. and um yeah so we um you know we we went to counseling just because we had come to a breaking point where it was like we can't even argue you know without a third party yep. <laughs> and so i've been there yep. we went to counseling. <laughs> yeah uh so we went to counseling and, you know, our counselor was really helpful and um, showed us a lot of stuff about ourselves individually, which led us to get some individual counseling. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I have just so much trauma from childhood, I just didn't even realize it, mm -hmm. you know, and so that's feeding into stuff. And uh, and so as we got healthy individually, we got healthy collectively. And in 13 years, this is my favorite year of being married to man, my wife. Praise God for that, bro. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's been amazing. Man. Bro, thank you for sharing that, man, and just being open about that stuff. Uh, I'm sure you talk a lot in interviews yeah. about music and stuff, uh, which, you know, again, yeah. it's, you're crushing it in that area. But I, I, it's cool to hear, like, this side of it. And just there are going to be a lot of dudes who relate to that, you know, like what you just said uh, about marriage stuff. Yeah. We've all been in that season, man. So I, I'm grateful you yep. opened up about that. Um, it's never over. Yep. Yep. Um, it's never over. It's never the end. When you think it's the end, it's not. You, you can make it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I always tell guys, like, don't make long-term conclusions about life or your wife or whatever in the middle of a short-term season. Like, just because it yeah. feels like that's it right now and it's always going to be like that or she's always going to be like that or your marriage is always going to be like that. Like, don't make those kind of statements in a short-term season. Um, and yeah. you realize how short-term totally. it is, like, when you get some perspective, like somebody, a counselor or a good friend or whatever, like, just calls you out a little bit or gives you insight on a blind spot and you're like, oh what felt huge like mm -hmm. isn't as big as it felt like this feels like you can we can actually mm -hmm. overcome this you know but, absolutely yeah absolutely you talked about more you talked about uh you know like the, the role of a father is just to point your kids back to the ultimate father uh it sounds like you had kids mm. young like how have you how do you feel like you're doing in that like what are some ways you're doing that like just pointing your kids back to jesus in the midst of all you got going on yeah, man. Well, you know, you, you have kids fresh out of college and you just are really idealistic and you think, you know, um, 
we're just gonna, you know, have a Bible studies and everything's just gonna work out perfect. <laughs> <Right>. And then, <laughs> you know, you, you get a little older, your kids get older and you realize like, you really don't have control. <laughs> you know, God has control. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> so, um, and so, um, you know, for, for me, what, what, what I had to begin to do is to do a lot of reverse engineering and just saying, what do I want to see long-term? And let me start putting some things in place, almost like a, a, a life curriculum, you know, mm. just saying, you know what, I want my kids to experience Jesus and truth. Um, but what am I building into our life that that happens consistently? And so, um, and so for me, it was just like, no matter what, man, I, I got to get four days a week where we're spending some time just wrestling with God and the scriptures and, mm. and just allowing them to ask hard questions. You know, my daughter is really like inquisitive, just even, even as like a five-year-old, she was just asking the toughest questions, you yeah. know, and just stuff like who made God? And I was like, well, nobody did, but how is that possible? If nobody <laughs> made God, and he's just, you know, and I'm like, are you serious right now? <laughs> um, but, um, but just giving them that freedom, you know, cause a lot of parents shut their kids down and don't let them question and wrestle. And then they begin to feel as if God doesn't let us question yeah, and wrestle. Right. Yep. And, um, and so I think the best thing I can do, you know, as I've been exposing them to truth and scripture is tell them how it's, it's impacted me. So I always try to give them a little personal anecdote or mm. story about my own life and how this applies to my life That's good. and my own failures. And so, yeah, man, um, just letting them see how God has been a, a good father to me. Mm. Um, and so that he can be a good father to them as well. That's good, bro. Uh, I think I got to like two out of the 50 questions I had for you today, uh, <laughs> but I think we right covered on. some good stuff and trust that uh, spirit led us to where he wanted us to go. But I guess, man, you got a lot of fans, a lot of fans that are going to be listening to this show. Uh, what would you say to the dude that's just like, he's a tired dad, man. He's like, he's trying to be a husband. He's trying to be a dad and he's trying to point his kids to Jesus mm. and, and be faithful to his wife. And like he, maybe he's on the end of his rope or playing out those scenarios mm -hmm. that you talked about earlier, where it's like, should I do this? Should we leave? What would it be like if I left? And like, just maybe the enemy's just messing with his brain. I guess any mm -hmm. last words of encouragement for that dude? Yeah. I, I think, um, you know, you, you gotta take care of yourself. And I think, um, when I say that, I mean, a lot of guys, we just, we thug it out and we just, you know, we just, oh, we'll figure it out. We don't go to the doctor. We don't, we just, we just are so focused on accomplishing our mission or our goals. Yeah. And um, I just think it's really important for us to pause, even if you got to get up 30 minutes earlier than you normally would to have a moment for yourself, to pray, to meditate, to process, to, to be vulnerable with God. Um, I think it's necessary, you know, your mental, emotional, spiritual, and even physical wellness all contribute to how effective you're going to be as a dad and as a husband. So you've got to take care of you. If you have nothing to give, um, then, then you, you know, it's going to get worse for you. Yeah. Um, and then I, and then I would just say, man, choose what you want most over what you want in the moment, hmm. you know, cause there's going to be times you want something in the moment. But then you got to think about what do I want most, mm. you know, in the moment I want to just go to a bar and just just drink and not think about anything. But what I want most is a healthy, whole and and great family. And so I should probably go home mm. and and just hang out with my kids, even though I'm dog tired. You know what I mean? And just what I want most, I want a good relationship with God. And so what I want in the moment is to to avoid you know, this men's group or book or whatever, but it's like, man, what do I want most? Let me choose what I want most over what I want in the moment. And uh, that usually ends up working well. Bro, that's so good. That's so good, man. Yeah. Thank you, man. I know you're so busy, but thank you for taking the time out. Yeah. I know that's super, it was encouraging me to me, man. You pointed me to Jesus. I feel closer to Jesus just hanging out with, with you for a minute. So thank you, bro. Uh, yeah, I'm grateful. Yeah, you man. you got you got a book coming out called uh, I Am Restored, and then your I, album's coming out called I Am Restored. Yeah, Restored. When do those come out? How can people get them? Well, they're, people know how to get yeah. books and music, uh, but when do those come yeah, out? Yeah, yeah, I mean, 
yeah, they'll they'll be out. Um, you know, the album comes out uh, later this this year. Um, you know, early summer, uh, late spring, and then the book comes out in the fall. And so, uh, so stay tuned. Um, I'm I'm very transparent on both the album and the book, and mm-hmm. so I'm just trying to give people some tools and some hope and some help. Let them know they're not alone. Yeah, appreciate you, bro. Thank you. Oh, pleasure's mine. Thank you.